There have been a few guys that have been signed by a couple of teams that I'm not really so sure about. It's not how I drew my career uh, up by any means. If I was to tell you how it would go based on the plan, uh, I wouldn't have said that I put on three different uniforms in the year 2022, but that's how it happens. There are several eyebrow-raising free agent signings that leave us with more questions than answers. These 10 free agent signings who sign new deals should have been avoided like the plague. Jimmy Garoppolo. You just knew that somebody was going to overpay Jimmy G, and of course it was going to be the Las Vegas Raiders. Who else would it be? After releasing their car from his contract, the Raiders pivoted to Garoppolo, handing the injury-prone signal caller to a three-year pact worth $72.75 million. The logic is simple. Garoppolo has familiarity with Raiders head coach Josh McDaniels, dating back to their time together with the New England Patriots. Look, signing Garoppolo to a one- or two-year deal would have made sense, but the Raiders are paying him to be their next starter for the next next three seasons. That is quite the risk given the concerning injury history and the fact that he's merely above average. If a championship caliber club like the San Francisco 49ers were confident moving on from Garoppolo, what makes you think he'll be a championship quarterback on a mediocre team like the Raiders? Any team that signed Garoppolo to a lucrative long-term deal was taking a calculated risk. Any team with common sense wouldn't have thrown this much money at him though. No surprise it turned out to be the Raiders, which are a team that seems to be okay with mediocrity every single year. The fact of the matter is, Garoppolo is not much of an upgrade over Carr, so why throw all this money at her? Why not just move up in the draft from the 7th overall pick, take your next franchise QB, pay him on a rookie contract, and use all that leftover money you saved to fix that treacherous defense? That would have been the logical decision, which explains why it's not the one that the Raiders chose to make. Baker Mayfield. The number one selection of the 2018 NFL Draft signed a one-year deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers worth up to $8.5 million. Barring a drastic move at the draft, it looks like Mayfield and 2021 second-rounder Kyle Trask will compete for the starting QB job. It's kind of hard to understand the Bucks' logic here. The Cleveland Browns' decision to replace him with Deshaun Watson remains controversial, no doubt, but Mayfield was a disaster with the Carolina Panthers, and you should be careful about reading too much into his mini late-season research with the Los Angeles Rams. No team should have signed Mayfield with the hope of him being their starter. If you ask me, the Bucks were better off just rolling with Trask and seeing what he's got while allocating that money they spent on Baker elsewhere. Unless GM Jason Light has a big move up his sleeve, the decision to sign Mayfield with the hope that he can compete for the starting job is interesting. At this point, the Bucks should be looking to rebuild rather than settling for mediocrity with a mediocre quarterback. Patrick Peterson. After a bounce back season with the Minnesota Vikings, the future Hall of Fame cornerback signed a two year deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers worth $14 million. Peterson turned back the clock and finished with a superb pro football focus grade of 80.7. The eight time pro bowler had five interceptions and 15 pass defenses, his highest mark since 2012. But Peterson is now a year older, and he has to learn a whole different defensive scheme in the Steel City. It's also difficult to envision that Peterson is really back. Given that his PFF grades in 2020 and 2021 were 55.2 and 63.0 respectively, Peterson was a good fit in Ed Donatell's zone-heavy defense in 2022, but the Steelers will need him to be a good man-to-man -man cover guy in the AFC loaded with elite receivers. Yeah, good luck with that. If this was a one-year deal with lesser value, we wouldn't hate it. But the Steelers apparently just watched Peterson's 2022 tape and ignored his struggles during the two seasons before that. Uh, how many cornerbacks were great at age 33 or older again? Anyone? Yeah, that's what I thought. Keep your expectations reasonable on Peterson. Chances are, last year's resurgence was more of a mirage than a sign of things to come. Riley Reef. In a bit of a surprise move, the New England Patriots signed veteran offensive tackle Riley Reef to a one-year deal worth $5 million. Now, with all due respect to one Bill Belichick, we're really struggling to understand this one. In 542 offensive snaps last season, Reef took four penalties and allowed three sacks per PFF, and he graded at just 64.3 overall. The year before, Reef allowed four sacks and graded at just 67.3 from PFF. Reef's production has been barely above average over the last five years. He's also entering his age 34 season, so why are the Patriots confident that he'll suddenly morph into a quality starter? Belichick and the Patriots always excel when it comes to turning little-known draft commodities into stud offensive linemen. Just look at Trent Brown and Michael Onwenu. 
So why they decided to take their chances on an aging and not so reliable reef is beyond me. Then again, who am I to question the Bill Belichick? Hayden Hurst. The Carolina Panthers went to work by adding more talent on offense, signing running back Miles Sanders, wide receiver Adam Thielen, and tight end Hayden Hurst. We like the Sanders and Thielen signings, but getting Hurst $21.75 million over three years is definitely a head-scratcher. Consider that Dalton Schultz and Mike Kosicki settled on one-year deals from the Houston Texans and New England Patriots respectively, and they've been far more productive up to this point than Hurst. Hurst's best season to date was with the Atlanta Falcons back in 2020 when he caught 56 passes for 571 yards and 6 touchdowns. So why is Carolina paying him like he's a consistent playmaker when he's barely a capable starter if that? A one-year deal worth no more than 4 to 5 million would have been acceptable. But an average of just over 7 million per season? on a three-year pact? It's hard to comprehend Carolina's logic here. Connor McGovern Raise your kids to be offensive linemen because many of them are getting a lot more money than what they're really worth. It's becoming quite comical at this point. Take the instance of guard Connor McGovern. Signed a three-year contract with the Buffalo Bills worth $22.35 million. The Bills haven't used much money on upgrading their secondary defensive line or wide receiver room, but they were fine paying a merely average guard close to $7.5 million annually. Brandon Bean is one of the best GMs in the business, but we would love to hear his logic on this one. McGovern's 2022 season leaves us wondering why the Bills think he'll upgrade their shaky O-line. The guy simply isn't reliable in pass protection, and pass protection is kind of something the Bills really need help with. Look, with limited cap space, you would think that Bean would have managed his finances a little bit better here. Honestly, how many other teams out there would have been confident giving McGovern a three-year deal worth anything close to the amount he got from Buffalo? Someone, please make it make sense. Graham Glasgow the Detroit Lions brought back an old friend and offensive lineman, Graham Glasgow, inking the ex-Dunford Bronco to a one-year pact worth up to $4.5 million. Sure, it is a relatively low-risk move, but the Lions probably should have done a little extra homework before signing him. Why? Well, because Glasgow was not good at all for the Broncos in 2022. The club allowed a league-high 63 sacks last season, even with the mobile Russell Wilson as their starting quarterback. Well, Glasgow was a huge reason for the issues on Denver's O-line. Pro Football Focus graded Glasgow at just 59.3 on the year. He took a ridiculous 10 penalties while allowing 5 sacks. He was limited to 7 games in 2021, suffering a season-ending ankle injury in Week 9. Detroit already has three building blocks on the line in Panay Sewell, Taylor Decker, and Frank Ragnow. So, why are they bringing in Glasgow when he's simply gonna be nothing more than a liability here? Josh Oliver Look, we get it, sometimes a team has to overpay a little bit to address a roster weakness. But why on earth are the Minnesota Vikings paying Josh Oliver all this money when they already have one of the NFL's best tight ends in TJ Hawkinson? Minnesota handed Oliver a three-year contract worth $21 million. For those who aren't good at math, it is a ton of money to pay a guy who has 26 career receptions for 230 yards and two touchdowns in 35 games played. Think about that. Minnesota is literally paying a guy $7 million a year when he is a backup tight end. Oliver is definitely not going to overtake Hawkinson for the starting job in many, and he's certainly not going to take targets away from Justin Jefferson and KJ Osborne. Out of all the free agents they could have targeted, the Vikings paid $21 million to a guy they literally do not need. Hey, good on Oliver for securing a payday that will set him up for life, but we wish we had a clue what the Vikings were thinking here. Robert Woods If Woods didn't suffer a torn ACL in 2021, he would have likely hit the 1,000-yard receiving marks for the third time in four years. Despite Woods' absence, the Los Angeles Rams went on to win Super Bowl 56 over the Cincinnati Bengals. The Rams decided to unload Woods on the Tennessee Titans Titans, replacing him with Allen Robinson in a move that backfired for all parties. Woods played all 17 games for the Titans, but had just 53 receptions for 527 yards and two touchdowns. The Titans decided to release Woods, who then signed a two-year deal with the AFC South rival Houston Texans worth $15.25 million. Interesting, considering they discarded consistent 1,000-yard threat Brandon Cooks to the Dallas Cowboys. 
Why wouldn't Houston just pay a little more for a younger, healthier, and better receiver like Juju Smith-Schuster or Jacoby Myers? Why are they paying Woods to be something he's never been, which is a true number one receiver? He's already on the wrong side of 30 and not even two years removed from a serious injury. Look, add it all up, and this signing is bound to be a problem in Houston. Sam Darnold. The New York Jets couldn't wait to get rid of the number three pick of the 2018 NFL Draft. Likewise, the Carolina Panthers couldn't wait for Darnold's contract to expire after their ill-fated decision to pick up the fifth-year option on his rookie deal. The San Francisco 49ers, curiously, signed Darnold to a one-year contract worth $4.5 million. Look, we know Kyle Shanahan can make it work with a lot of different quarterbacks. I mean, who saw 2022 Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy leading them to the NFC Championship game? But Darnold just isn't a starting caliber quarterback. The 49ers obviously signed him as an insurance for Purdy and Trey Lance, both of whom are dealing with significant injuries that ended their 2022 campaigns. But it just feels like the 49ers could have gotten someone better for a similar price like Andy Dalton, Marcus Mariota, or Gardner Minshew. Darnold isn't as athletic as the latter two, and his accuracy and decision-making will always be a problem. If Purdy and Lance aren't ready to go come week one, this is the quarterback the 49ers want to save them? We wouldn't mind the move if one of the two youngsters had a clean bill of health. But again, you just can't rely on a guy like Darnold to step in and rescue them if the situation calls for it. Good luck to the 49ers. You better hope that Purdy or Lance are good to go once September rolls around. But which other free agents should NFL teams have avoided like the plague this offseason? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.